All right, so now that we kind of understand the, the naming, we do want to make sure that when we have parallel lines and a transversal, which is exactly what we're going to go to um, in this next problem, we still have the same relationships as if they weren't parallel. Um, I shouldn't say relationships, the same names as if they weren't parallel, but the relationships are a little bit different. So for alternate interior angles, um, we have alternate sides of the transversal and interior of the, the parallels. So we can actually see that over here. Um, and I know if you're looking at your notes page, it's all kind of black and white. We don't have um, colored notes pages, which would be nice. Um, but this is kind of the intention of this one, but it's kind of nice because it's only showing the one. So I, I did the, the, here's the top left one and the bottom right one. So it's on alternate sides, which alternate means different. Different sides of the transversal and interior of the parallel. So it's inside inside the parallels. And the relationship, so I'll have you write relationship, relationship, relation, Ooh. I should have given us more room there, right? Relationship, which just means, you know, when I have these patterns, what happens? So if I have parallel lines and transversal, and the angles are on different sides of the transversal and both inside, so they're on different sides, and the, but they're both in between the parallel lines, see? in between here, then they are congruent. So this is the congruent symbol. It's an equal sign with a little kind of whoopee above it, like that, like a little wiggly line. So this means congruent. So I'll put this a little closer even, just so that we can kind of see this. So these are congruent. And then when we have same side um, interior angles, so same side, I don't think we need another word for same side, they're on the same side of the transversal, and they're both inside of the parallel lines, again, interior. So we're looking in between the parallel lines like this, but now instead of going to alternate sides of the transversal, we're on the same side. So these do not have the same relationship. They're not congruent. They are supplementary. Supplementary, which means they add up to 180 degrees. So that's definitely a big one. We want to make sure we understand that, that relationship there. All right, the next one we have alternate exterior angles. So alternate, again, still means different or opposite. I guess you could think of it like that. So um, different sides of the transversal again. So now we have one on the right and one on the left of the transversal um, and exterior of the parallels. So this means outside. So if this is inside like this, this is interior, then outside means that we're gonna be outside here like this, okay? So we can see this one is definitely outside, this one's outside, and they're on different sides of that transversal. This one's on the right, this one's on the left. Okay, um, so when we have alternate exterior angles, so let's go back to that congruent relationship. Um, and then we have one last one here. We have same side, I guess I'll do it in this light green, same side of the transversal. Again, I don't think I need an alternate word for same side. Um, and they're um, both exterior um, of the parallel, so they're outside. So we still have outside here. So I can definitely see these are both outside the parallel lines, they're not in between them. But now they're both on the same side of the transversal. We're not on alternate sides, we're both on the left side there. So these again are supplementary. Um, and one other thing they don't put on this little notes page, which I'll have to add to the other notes page here just to make sure that we have it, are called corresponding angles. Corresponding angles. That one's an important one, mainly because it's, you know, um, another piece of congruency. So corresponding angles are congruent and to find a corresponding angle, it's almost like if you could take the angle and just scooch it down until it fit right into that other piece. So it almost looks like I take this one and kind of scooch it down, or I could take this one and kind of scooch it up like that. But it's kind of like sliding the angle back and forth. Those are corresponding angles. And we can say they're in the same relative position. What that means is if I look at this one here, it's below this parallel line and to the left of the transversal. 
So I'd want to go to the other parallel line and go below it and to the left, and that's my corresponding angle. So I can describe it in the same way. That's what same relative position means um, based on its parallel line. So that's another really big one that we use pretty often during these um, proofs when we're going through and doing the, the um, two parallel lines and a transversal. These lines are parallel lines. It says two parallel lines are cut by a transversal. Now that they're parallel, these guys have special qualities. All of these are congruent. So if I can find alternate exterior angles, alternate interior angles, corresponding angles, if I know that the lines are parallel, then these angle relationships are congruent to each other. There are some other angle relationships we have. Um, there, there's another one called same side interior, same side exterior, and those instead of being congruent, those are supplementary, so they add together. So in this case, like two and five would be same side interior. So they're on the same side as the transversal and they're in between the two lines here. Um, so I'm actually going to snap a picture because I think that's a little easier sometimes to actually take a picture. There it is. All right, don't say it. Wasn't the best diagram anyway. Okay. So um, the other ones, same side exterior, that would be like one and six because they're both above, they're both on the same side, and they're both outside um, the, the parallel lines. So those would be supplementary too. So when I'm talking about exterior, like this is exterior, this is exterior because it's outside the parallel lines and interior would be in in here because it's inside the parallel lines so exterior interior hopefully that makes sense and then when we're talking about the transversal it's always the line that's crossing the other two and they should be parallel for um, any of these angle relationships to be true they have to be parallel um, otherwise it's just a name it doesn't mean anything um, when we say alternate exterior angles, unless they're parallel lines that the transversal is crossing, they're just alternate exterior angles. Once they're parallel, which they tell us they're parallel here, now they're congruent. So it makes a big difference there. Um, all right, let's go ahead and fill this piece in. So we have angle four, and that equals, I should turn the line tool off, 129 degrees. And they want to know angles six and seven. So we need to kind of think of a way, how do I get from four over to six and seven? So there's a couple of different ways. There's always a couple of ways. I could use corresponding angles. So I could actually slide this guy right down. Four and eight would be equal, they're corresponding angles. And then I could use linear pair and vertical angles. I could use um, same side exterior angles like this, four and seven. They're supplementary, so they would add up to 180. And actually, if we think about that idea too, if this slides down as a corresponding angle, because that's usually the one I, I wanna say that students pick a little bit more there, um, well, then we would see that these are a linear pair, which add up to 180. So it, it makes sense that four and seven would also be a linear pair they have to add up to 180 as well because the, the 129 is used for both angles. Um, so if I go 180 and I subtract 129, let's see, we get 51. So that's this guy here is 51 degrees. And I just didn't give myself, I should have given myself a little bit more room there with the spacing, but um, I have to type it in here anyway. So 51. And then angle six is a vertical angle to angle eight. So that's also gonna be 129 degrees. I don't really have to do anything for that. I just have to remember that it's a vertical angle. So I immediately have the answer for that one as well. Perfect, all right. So we have another guy here. Okay, 
So now we're again, we're given that these are parallel and they're going to start to do this more often where they don't use the word parallel, they use the symbols parallel. So we have n is parallel to k and this is going to be my transversal. This line is crossing the other two. That's the transversal. So sometimes it's a little helpful to have it in a different color like that. Um, so now we want to figure out what y and z are. Um, we're given this 68, so I need to figure out how to get this 68 up here. So it's going to be very similar to what I just did. I have 68, turn that off, and I can do alternate uh, or same side exterior angles. Z and 68 have to add up to 180 degrees, which would make sense. This guy has to be 68. These two add up to 180 degrees, so I can use that same thing. I can either use corresponding and linear angles or same side exterior angles have to also add up to the same thing. So now I can just subtract 68 from 180 and I get 112 degrees. So that's my first bit there that I needed. Now this one is going to be 68 also. So let's see, I'll do this in just different color here. So this angle is going to equal 68. Now we don't want to know what the whole angle equals, we just want to know what y equals. So I need to go 4y minus 48, and I know this has to be 68 degrees. They're vertical angles. If this one's 68, then the, the opposite one there is also 68 degrees. So I can set it equal 68, and I can start to solve here. So I'm going to add 48 to both sides. 4y, negative 48 plus 48 cancels. So let's see, we have 68 plus 48, what do we get there? 116. Um, and we're going to divide by 4. So we have 4 divided by 4 is 1. Um, and with this one, I can even break this apart. 100 divided by 4 is 25. And 16 divided by 4 is 4. So I'm going to think that this is going to be 29. Yep. So 29. So y equals 29. So again, we're just kind of working through some of those pieces. Um, and I know they're still kind of, they're pretty brand new to us. We just started working on these. Um, but we jump kind of right into applying them um, where we have especially corresponding and vertical and linear angles. Um, we will definitely be using the alternate exterior and alternate interior as we move forward here more. Um, all right, so... There it is. Okay, so this one is a little bit um, more involved because now we have two parallel lines. So K, and they forgot to label this, but K and L, and they are parallel to each other. Um, and then I also have and I'll do this in pink, I guess. M is parallel to N. And these are just parallel marks. I know I put them on a few other ones and didn't quite explain that, but they're parallel marks. And you always do more than one. So one mark to one mark, two marks to two marks. It just shows that they belong together. So then the number of marks, we do that. Um, so now that I know that all of these pieces, these are um, parallel to each other, what I do is I choose one transversal at a time. Um, so any one of these lines can be a transversal um, since we have two parallel lines. So let's see, I wanna go 60 to X. So in this case, the transversal is gonna be this line, just for a moment. So these are same side interior angles or sometimes I've heard them called consecutive interior angles, they have to add up to 180 degrees. Um, so if I know they add up to 180 and I'm using 64, I'm gonna subtract 180 minus 64 and see what's left over for that other angle there, which would be um, 116 degrees. So that's what this X has to equal. So I know X is 116 because these are same side interior angles. 
and those are supplementary. Those are the, the there's very only a couple of them that aren't congruent, and that's the the same side interior and the same side exterior. Um, most of the other angles are going to be um, having that congruent quality to them. Um, all right, so now we want to go from here to here. So now we're going to change the transversal is no longer going to be the blue line. We're going to kind of change our thinking and say this guy is now the transversal because I want the parallel lines to be M and N now um, so that I can kind of jump between and I can go alternate, oops, forgot to turn the darn line tool off again, alternate interior angles like that because alternate interior angles are congruent. So I can go from here to here and say that 4y plus 36 has to equal x, but I know x equals 116. So now I can subtract 36 from both sides, and I get 4y equals 36 minus 36 cancels, and I get 80 here, so I get 0 and then 8. Divide by 4, divide by 4. 4 divided by 4 cancels, so I get y equals and if I divide by 4, I will get 20. So y will equal 20. All right.